coming out onto the park there, the Salford Club. I'll quickly run through them. A lining up Gary Jack, Jason Critchley, Greg Austin, Pete Williams, Tex Evans. Half backs for the Red Devils, Steve Blakely, Sean Brown. Front row consists of David Young, Mark Lee, and Terry O'Connor. Second row is Paul Barber and Ian Blees. Loose forward Andy Burgess, sub Scott Naylor, Bob Marsden. I've got Steve Ramsbottom with me from the Salford Club. We'll get a word from him shortly. For the Warrington Club, we have Lee Penny, Mark Forster, Alan Bateman, Jonathan Davis and Rob Myler. Halfbacks are Kevin Ellis and Greg Mackey. Front row, Craig Teitzel, John Thursfield and Roland Phillips. Second row, Bob Jackson, Gary Sanderson. Loose forward, Kelly Shelford. Subs, Paul Derbyshire and Gary Tease. With that, I'll go into the mascot details. We're very proud to welcome today, eight years old, Alan Lumley. Alan's nine next week and he attends Stockton Heath County Primary School. His hobbies are playing rugby, football, tennis, and he's a bit of a poet. His favourite players down here at Wilderspool, Jonathan Davis and Kelly Shelford. With that, thanks to main match sponsors Greenalls, match ball sponsor, Beat Birchwood BMW, associate sponsors, Foster Wheeler Energy, and programme sponsor, APB Limited. Match ball sponsors once again, Beechwood, BMW. Now then, it's just standing away to my left, Steve Ramsbottom, long-time commentator at the Willows. I'll just bring Steve in. Andy Gregory, not here. Big loss for your team, Steve. Well, maybe Sean Brown's been playing well, but just whilst the camera's on that Salford mascot today, let's give him a word as well, shaking hands with the referee, and what a big occasion it is for those two youngsters. And I think, isn't it great that in this, this professional game, there's still time for the youngsters to have their moment of glory with their heroes. Congratulations to both those youngsters today. Yeah, it's going to be a great game in prospect. Both teams have got a lot to play for. Warrington know that they've still got a fair chance of getting to the championship, provided that they win today. Salford, on the other hand, well, they might be three points clear down of the pack at the bottom of the table, but only six games to go, and if matches aren't won, every possible chance is to be taken of winning a match. Otherwise, relegation still threatens. On the other hand, for Salford, if the victories come, then there's a real possibility of a top eight spot. Weather, unfortunately, is going to be against good opening, op open handling rugby. It's been raining for about an hour, and uh, maybe that will have a bearing on the game, do you think? Well, it's not going to help the players, so keep the ball tied in. They're all professionals, they're all earning good money. Need to prove it. Our match referee, Stuart Cummins. Warrington are lying second in the league with 18 wins. Salford down in 12th with nine wins. So we're almost ready to go. I'll activate the stopwatch. Steve Blakely kicks long and it's fielded. The Warrington come charging out with Sanderson. They're looking to move the ball quick style. Here's Bateman. He feeds Foster. Foster cuts inside Critchley. Mark Foster's got his head back. Player coach Gary Jack wears one. Mark Foster still alive, tackled on the quarter line. A great opening, Steve. Absolutely fabulous. Great attack and what cover defence from Peter Williams. So here we go, it's Warrington skipper Mackey. Feeds Ellis, has Davis. Davis cuts inside, takes an upstairs tackle. Stuart Cummings whistles. Ian Blees, the guilty culprit. Well, what a start. Me and Steve up here have just been saying, trying to make excuses for the players about the handling conditions. They've made a mockery of that. Fair decision from Mr Cummings, I think, there, Steve. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. But that was a great attack from Warrington, isn't it? The very, very first play. Normally, it goes to a forward just for bring it forward, just safely, but not that time. The handling across the line was absolutely brilliant. Superb start from then. But let's give credit to that Salford cover. It was back covering across in numbers, and in the end, it, uh, they snuffed out the attack on the left-hand side for Warrington. But very definitely a, a penalty chance for Davis in these opening minutes. Great start of the game. Yeah, like Steve says, Warrington built that attack in their own quarter. Mark Foster surged into the Red Devils' defence. Warrington are on the toes, looking to hit it big from the first word, as resulted in Jonathan Davis, 21 metres out, 10 metres in. I'm trying to decipher which way the breeze is blowing. If anything, there isn't any. Slight breeze coming from the back of your selves, watching this, from the back of our gantry. No doubt it'll be in Warrington's favour throughout the game because Breeze is always out in opposition's favour. Well, Steve's expecting the wind to change around at half time. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Jonathan Davis has kicked goals all over the world at Cardiff Arms Park, Wembley, Australia. He's here at Wilderspill today on a dreary day. Summer rugby's been debated at the RFL. Well, days like this show you why we should have it. We will eventually get the conversion attempt. I'll have a look at the clock. We're just in the third minute. 
It's Davis once again looking to go through his kicking routine. Crowd at Wilderspool, not as big as lately. Davis strikes well, the crowd like it. The touch judges don't. Score remains pointless. We'll get a restart from the quarter line. Oh, we've just got to have a mention of Tex Evans. Uh, first game back in the senior squad since the uh, 5th of November. Good to see him back. And interestingly, and I don't know whether the rugby league will like this, right wing is Tex's position. Right wing is where he's playing. He's swapped places with Jason Critchley, but he's wearing number five. Interesting. So, Mackey feeds Penny. Lee Penny, powerful uh, broken field runner these days. Greg Austin, former Keith Lee Cougar, was linked with Wilderspill, but Brian Johnson doesn't want players who choose their positions. Austin didn't come to Wilderspill. Craig Teitzel with a big run there. Here's Shelford. Misses out Jackson for Bateman. Austin on the tackle again. Two big tackles from Greg Austin. Here's Thursfield for Mackey. Roland Phillips, crowd favourite, has the ball tied in. The much talked about Terry O'Connor. Wearing 10, involved in the tackle there, more of that later. Here's Mackey, looks for options, keeps it tied in. And Paul Farber affects the tackle. It is kick time, Stuart Cummins has got his arm raised. Look for a skyer, Jonathan Davis puts that up, 100 feet. Big pressure for one time, kangaroo fullback, Gary Jack. Well, that's a gift try, Kevin Ellis was sniffing. Heartbreaker for Salford, not the best to start, Steve. No, Salford. Uh, in actual fact, Gary Jack was the first touch of the ball that Salford have had. The pressure was there from Warrington. Salford doing all the right things, containing the six tackles. The kick, well, it was uh, placed very well, wasn't it, under the posts? The ball is slippy. Gary Jack, normally the most reliable of catchers, not on that occasion, unfortunately, and gifting the first try to Warrington. So not the start that Salford would have wanted, but only four minutes gone, a long way to go. And so, certainly from this position, you'd expect Davis to be successful. So Warrington certainly have started this, this game at enormous pace. They've controlled the ball magnificently. Salford have not touched it until that Gary Jack fumble. But Salford, I'm sure, will rally round and come back into this game. Being at six points, it is now, 60-0. Being behind in the early pages of the game is not uncommon to Salford of late, they conceded an early try against Bradford, they conceded an early try against Castleford, but in both those games they performed very well after that, and I've no doubt that this will happen today, but at the moment, with only five minutes on the clock, it's Warrington six, Salford nil. Yeah, Gary Jack won't enjoy watching that, that kick-off doesn't look so clever either, so that's two basic skillboy type errors in the opening five minutes. Davis could probably convert. One would hope that the club, the Warrington club, will look to run the ball. Jonathan Davis has the ball in his grasp. He's going to kick for touch. Stitches on. 18 metres. Road goes around Wilderspill Stadium. The opening try for Kevin Ellis in four minutes. Warrington in possession. Full set of six to come from 25 metres out. It comes for Craig Tysall to steam into the defensive line. Breaks the quarter line, no problem. Bit of kerfuffle at the play the ball. Stuart Cummins lets it go. Terry O'Connor, who has been widely tipped as the next number 10 at Central Park, in possession. So Salford with the ball. Six minutes into the game and Salford's first touch and they'll be glad to, to get some running of their own gun. And for the first time it's Warrington having to make the tattles and that's just what they're doing as Salford will, will try and work an opening. Burgess this time. Conditions greasy underfoot. Burgess steps out of one, but not the next two tattlers. Salford looked to put something together. Sean Brown in for Andy Gregory. Long kick. Running deep and running and running and running. It's the flag. Excellent kick. Excellent kick there. Went into touch from the corner flag. You can't get much more precise than that. So we'll get a scrum down. We won't get a scrum down. We'll get a restart from the 25 because the ball hit that touch flag. There we go. John Thursfield waits for the ball. Mark Forster is missed out for Bob Jackson. Bob Jackson steams into Mark Lee, pushes him back a good four metres. Warrington stacked with personnel deep to their left. Thursfield will activate Shelford. Here it is Shelford. Cuts inside Ian Blees. 
Andy Burgess joins the party. So a lively opening at Wilderspill Stadium. Here's former Thato Heath Amateur, Gary Sanderson, coughs the ball up. Salford in possession once again. Yeah, thanks, Bill. So good to come from Salford and David Young going forward strongly. So Salford having their opportunity now with the ball in possession. Line not so good. Sean Brown having to check, but still finds further. Put Salford a little stationary at that moment. And it was Tex Evans' his first touch of the ball before. They were helping Blakely going forward positively. But unable to find a clear opening. Salford good line over that side. Andy Burgess checks to come inside and the tackling good. It's the fifth one. Salford not made a great deal of headway. But Mark Lee's going now. He's going to put the kick through. It's a short one. It's an interesting one. And it goes right to Jason Critchley, who snaps it up and scores in the corner. Oh, well, how well can you come back into the game? It was everybody expecting either the high kick or the long kick or the deep kick or whatever. Instead, it was the short kick. It went between the three quarters of Warrington and Jason Critchley was onto it in a flash and raced over in the corner. And what a way to come back into the game with eight minutes gone. How did you see that one, Bill? that try coming there from Jason Critchley put the cat amongst the pigeons as it were just two points in the game two tries in nine minutes if we can keep that up for the rest of the game everybody's going to be well satisfied <laughs> a bit of bias coming in there from our visiting commentator and having none of that Warrington have restarted as Warrington lad Tex Evans would love to put one over his hometown club today However, Salford are going to have to work hard to try and do that. So there's a big tackle affected upon Terry O'Connor. Salford keeping the ball moving, looking to get it out wide. Here's Ty scorer, Jason Critchley. Tremendous tackle from Alan Bateman. Welsh international centre there. Pulling out a big tackle. Critchley was almost away again, Steve. It was nice play from Salford on the narrow side. They actually created the opening, and that was superb defensive awareness from Bateman, and also no mean turn of speed to catch, catch Critchley. Great rugby league. Yeah, can't argue with that. Top class rugby league on attack and defence. There's a tackle in midfield. Gary Jack's come up from fullback, involved himself. Marlin Allen Bateman somewhat. Roland Phillips looks to put yardage on. Please involved in the tackle again. Here's Gary Sanderson. Runs at Mark Lee. Lee affects the tackle. Stuart Cummins pulls back the Red Devils, a required 10. And Mackey looks to instigate runners. Here's Shelford. Feeds Penny. Penny doing well to take the pass. Ball breaks the half. Burgess on the tackle. Bit of kerfuffle at the play of the ball. Shelford's tidied it up. So, pretty much even Stevens. Kick time for the Warrington Club. Look for the runners to chase down a Davis Skyer. There's a high kick, another nightmare for the Salford defence. Tex Evans commits no mess-ups, attempts to come away. Salford move it great style. Salford showing you a bit of uh, adventurism in the play, throwing the ball about. Yeah, it was a good defensive six from Salford as well. And Gary Jack, he'll be wanting to, to make amends, I'm sure, for, for the fumble early on in the game. Good clearing run from him. And Critchley, one try already. Still difficult to put down, looking for somebody to pass to, but Salford just bunched at the moment. The Warrington defensive line is looking good. Ian Blees gets his pass back onwards. And O'Connor has to take his time to get it, but the ball's dropped and the referee's going to pull them back for, for the knock-on. So Salford perhaps just trying to play the rugby, standing still, nobody quite in the, in the right running line, and another opportunity now, a real chance for Warrington inside the Salford 20. Yes, yeah, Salford coughing up possession there. Unforgivably, everything was frantic. Players were snatching at the ball rather than waiting for it. And Jonathan Davis takes a copybook tackle. So, look for the ball to come infield. Our way by Roland Phillips. Phillips takes the pass. He's battered immediately. David Young turns up and delivers a big shot. Phillips will play the ball. Here's Bob Jackson. So, Warrington now midway within the red zone of the visitors. Bit of messing about at the play the ball again. Bad that at every tackle today. Here's Sanderson, Shelford. It's Lee Penny. Lee Penny steps inside. Lee Penny, elusive customer. Two red jerseys put Penny away. 
Farber involved. Here's Mackey. Cuts play. Feeds it out for Shelford. Shelford tries to sneak through alone. Can't manage it. It's Greg Austin on the tackle. We've had a whistle. To be honest with you, I haven't got a clue what for. We might have had a slap in the tackle. Kelly Shelford's got the ball tied in there. You usually expect David Young to be the one called out. He's that sort of player. Paul Farber, Gary Jack and David Young all getting 100 lines there from Stuart Cummins. And we get another penalty. Did you see the incident, Steve? No, not really. It was just, uh, obviously, it was a tackle. And uh, the touch just decided it was a little overzealous. Uh, but it gives Warrington another six. Certainly does. It's Craig Tyxall, a man who picks up big yardage in big situations, shirks nothing, drives into the defensive line there. Farber was involved. Here's Phillips, the more exciting of the two running props at Wilderspell, looking to unload, nobody home. So two props in the first two tackles. Now we'll get the runners. This is Mackey. Defensive line's come up good, done its job. Warrington cough up the ball. A bit of a let off for the Red Devils. Certainly was, but let's give credit to the Reds' defence for. And here's Gary Jack getting out of one. Excellent clearing run from him, but that was superb defence from Salford. They contain Warrington very, very well. And we have to remember that these conditions are difficult for ball handling. And one has got to excuse players dropping the ball in this situation. As it is Salford now putting the, the, the passes together. Ian Blees looks to, to create that vital half opening to pass on, not that time. And Terry O'Connor promoted from the 18 this season and certainly made that number 10 jersey his own and still a young man. Sean Brown has got a long one out, well taken by Andy Burgess. On to Peter Williams in the line, on to Tex Evans. Tex Evans is going to come back inside, he gets on to Peter Williams. Peter Williams kicks ahead and he's still got the legs to get there and he kicks ahead again. Superb attack from Salford. The limp loop round the other side. As he comes to the end of his career, we really must start to sing the praises. Oh, it's Sean Brown selling a dummy and Salford so, so close now to the, to the Warrington line. Can they make the most of this sort of position? It's at this time that games are won if they're going to be by taking advantage of two metres only from the line. Mark Lee's looking back inside. Oh, but unfortunately, the ball not taken by Ian Blees and a chance goes a-begging. Ian Blees injured in that, in that tackle, but a great attack from, from Salford before. Peter Williams retiring at the end of this season, one of Salford's stalwarts over seven seasons. So, while we've had that little break there, we had a bit of a knock involving Ian Blees and Bob Jackson. Bob Jackson still receiving treatment. Craig Tightsell has left the park with lo what looks like an injury to his left thigh. So, Tightsell was wearing eight, has gone. Derbyshire wearing 14, has came onto the park. We have a big push from the Salford pack. Wellington come up in possession. Scrum count 3-1. Penalty count 2-0. Score 6-4. Warrington in possession in their own red zone, looking to build. It's Kelly Shelford, feeds Ellis. Bob Jackson still receiving treatment. Backfield does not look to be in good shape. The ball's come out in the tackle. Players are pointing at touch judges and the referee and each other and the sky and anything in particular, and it will be Salford's advantage. So another real opportunity now for Salford to back into this game at 6-4. Uh, at and on the Warrington 20 and in possession. Blakely taking it on his own, trying to find an opening, but Davis makes sure he doesn't get away, but he gets up to play the ball quickly. Sean Brown back inside to Andy Burgess, striding forward so well. Look at Andy Burgess sniffing that line and Salford so close again in within 10 metres. Forbes there for the push. But all the ball knocked down. David Young passes on to Stuart Chrisley and the pass not given to try, not, to, not awarded because the referee claims it was a forward pass, but good Salford pressure and really a little bit of steadiness there could have had a try for Salford. Yes, you could say that, or you could say it was harder to bomb it than score. Salford did bomb it. Holes appearing in the Warrington defence. Salford exploited them. But that's a good early warning for Brian Johnson's men. Don't go to sleep, you'll get punished. Scrum count takes up another one. Scrum count now 4-2. There's a tackle involving Austin. Warrington not having everything their own way by any stretch of the imagination. Trying to throw it about in their own quarter. Bateman's fed Davis. Davis cuts inside Williams. Davis has a hole and goes. Big tackle supplied Ian Blees, now recovered from his knock. So this is Mackey. 
Roland Phillips, another Welsh international in the Warrington team, wriggling through tackles. Three forwards finally bring Phillips to a grinding halt. But on quarter time, 20 minutes gone. We're getting a little bit of uh, childish antics in the play of balls. One would hope that Rugby League takes over. I missed that incident. Did you see it, Steve? No, I don't think it was anything too significant. Touch judge thinking that uh, Ian Blees had done something there, but I don't think Ian Blees knows uh, what the touch judge was on for either. But it's penalty going, going Warrington's way. And uh, has Bob Jackson gone off there, Bill, whilst the play was going on? Thanks, Steve. Making me look an egg. I don't know. Apparently so. I'm look yeah, Gary Tease is on wearing 15, so that's Tease wearing 15 on. Jackson wearing 11 off. We've had another penalty for the Warrington Club. Recap the game. Scrum count 4-2 for the wire. Penalty count 3-0 for the wire. Score 6-4 for the wire. Now in the 22nd minute, it is Gary Tease back in the team after having had a broken thumb. Stuart Cummins is quite clearly wrong. Ball was not stolen. Ball came out in the tackle. Salford can adjust themselves to be unlucky there. Absolutely, and uh, and when you're one of the teams down towards the uh, bottom reaches of the first division, you do tend to notice the refereeing decisions that go against you unfairly. I mean, I know over a season it's the same for everybody, but it just seems to, to happen more when you when you're called Lee or Oldham or Salford when you're playing Warrington, Wigan or St Helens. But it's a penalty to the wire. Yeah, like Steve says. Clubs who lose a lot of games tend to think they get penalised more than they should be. Well, that was the case for the Warrington Club last season. Nobody shed any tears then, so I'm not going to shed any now. So Jonathan Davis will find himself with a medium difficult penalty. Would expect Davis to be successful. I had an idea in my head as I made my way here to Wilderspill this morning, Steve, that the Salford forwards would be well fired up, would take no prisoners, and that's definitely been the case. Yeah, after that uh, first flurry from Warrington, after the first five minutes or so, Salford certainly have come back into this game and very much holding their own. Davis takes his time, as always, with, uh, with these penalty attempts. He's missed one that was slightly further out early on. Steadies himself. Strikes the ball well, and the crowd like that one. So, successful penalty attempt from him, and pushes the Warrington lead to eight points to four. Eight points to four, 23 minutes on the clock, but there has been some stoppage time. So, here's a restart. After that, Davis two-pointer. Gary Sanderson traps the ball. Sanderson now approaching his uh, peak form. He takes a huge tackle there. The ball's out. It's a Salford attack. Ball should have gone wide. Salford with the foot on the gas, pressing hard. Yeah, and really planes getting the chance here. Close range. O'Connor trying to find a way through, but no way through. Warrington, oh, something going on there. Somebody unhappy about what happened. Warrington penalised that time. Although I think that uh, the fans thought that that had been prompted by a Salford player by Terry O'Connor and that it was retaliation from the Warrington player. They might be right. Cummings, Mr. Referee Mr Cummings didn't see the first incident. He saw the second and it was a decision going up, going Salford's way. The difference is that one didn't lead to two points. Will it lead to six? David Young fearlessly driving forward for the, for the first one and Salford so close to line. Ian Blee's on to Forber, trying to push them off but has to hang on to it wisely, sensibly hanging on to it. Can Salford convert this position, this possession into points, important points? 8-4 down, Mark Lee finds the opening, Ian Blee's is there, he's up and down, he's round, he's the referee's right on the spot. That is the lee Blees combination that we've seen so often. That time Ian Blees really had to work to put that ball down to keep, to keep his, 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 his presence and to remember where that line was. And that really was a very, very good try and levels the scores at, at eight points each. That's right, and uh, you wonder, don't you, Mr Cummings seems to have been involved with a lot of difficult games over the last few weeks and you wonder whether that's the games or the refereeing but certainly we hope it doesn't deteriorate because we've all come to see rugby and we're looking at two planes two 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 teams 
that really can play the rugby. Now Blakely he strikes it well, and it's a beauty. What a cracker that one is, Steve Blakely. Well, we know what a goal kicker he can be, and with that very difficult conversion, probably the most difficult kick of either Davis or Blakely this afternoon, he's been successful and put Salford into the league. 26 minutes gone, Salford coming back from 4-0 down, from 8-4 down, now at 10 points to 8 in the lead. And you say that Salford playing better than their position in the league. But two games apart this season, I think Salford have always played better than their position in the league. The question is whether they can maintain it for the full 80 minutes. But they're in a good position at the moment. Sean Brown making sure that's his and Tex Evans from his favourite right wing position has to hang on to the ball. Andy Burgess cross field but safely. Salford in possession. Forber tackled along before he's in his stride but just clearing the 20. Mr Cummings bringing Warrington back. David Young for the next charge and he does just that. But taken down. 30 metres out, O'Connor running forward strongly, again taking the Warrington tacklers and that has been good forward charges from Salford, made a lot of ground. Sean Brown in the Andy Gregory position with the kick, fielded well by Warrington. Yes, Warrington finding themselves under the hammer for a few minutes there. This is Rob Myler being tackled midfield. There's Kelly Shelford looking to scoot away, picks up four to five metres. Atmosphere turns itself up a notch at Wildersville Stadium. Gary Sanderson runs at Terry O'Connor. Farber joins the party. Score 8-10. Look at the clock, now in the 28th of 40. This is Phillips. Dragging defenders with him. Phillips looks at the half and gets there, super styled. What an effort. Andy Burge is hanging on, completed the tackle. Thursfield, Mackey, Ellis, Shelford, Davis. Sharp pass goes to ground, it's snapped up, Evans is gone, Tex Evans is history, Evans crashes in, tilts the game, tremendous interception try, Steve Ramsbottom next to me, two foot off the ground, he'll describe the try. Oh, what can you say, Tex Evans will have loved that, and Salford fans made the journey, will love that also, Tex picked up the drop ball and the drop ball well it was Warrington playing the rugby they were doing everything right and positive but the Salford pressure the, re the, the pressure in defence was relentless prompting and causing the error what about that one that one's hanging and hanging but just to the right of the post scoring tries I was just holding my breath I thought perhaps for a second it was Davis might have caught him but Tex showing he's still got that important turn of speed when needed and he didn't he snap up that loose ball well and hair over out there quite wide out near the corner but Salford great position to be in 14 points to 8 in the lead 30 minutes on the clock Davis gets things going Sean Brown makes that his safely and Tex Evans well his confidence will be sky high now and surely that was a high tackle Surely it was a high tackle. Gary Jack very unhappy with that. Understandably so. And that surely must be more than just a penalty. Who was it on the Warrington side? Gary Tees. Gary Tees. Yeah. But Tex Evans certainly out there. Yeah, I don't think that was a an on-purpose hit, Steve. I think Gary Tees has flung an arm out. We've all done that in our playing days when the ball had a lace in. But uh, Mr Cummins, as you said, he always seems to be involved in these fiery encounters. He's having a word with Gary Tees and the club skipper. Any repetition of that, I think somebody will be having a walk. Tex Evans in no state to carry on and really... You really have to say that maybe Mr Cummings should have, should have been more forceful in his decision and that should have been a sin binning, at least, for, for Gary Tees. Because there's absolutely no doubt about the dangerousness of that tattle as Evans. Still on the field, but really not knowing quite what day it is. And, and Salford, I think, will be making the change. 
Evans coming off the ball surely lost them without a doubt a decision has to go Salford's way so a change on the Salford side unfortunately Tex Evans playing so well in this this opening half hour scoring that that try and Scott Naylor having emerged from an excellent 18 match on Friday night as the man to go onto the substitutes bench so Scott Naylor I think will take up Tex Evans's position on the right wing as Salford look to see if they can consolidate this lead that they have at the moment why are very much on the rack at the minute but certainly the wire defensive effort has gone up a notch more intensity about about the tackling as Salford looked to move this ball wide like that old Scott Naylor's in the left centre position trying to get his pass on but he can't and it's Austin who's gone on the right wing Sean Brown there to Gary Jack in the line and Ian Blees there's a man over little kick through the chase is on Austin's the speed man the ball's running and running the chases are there he has to be played and it's Lee Penny who's gotten it where are the tacklers Lee Penny does superbly well superbly well to bring that ball clear well I tell you what there was an awful off the ball foul there our match officials need to open their eyes because things are definitely getting out of hand so Warrington trying to maintain discipline stick to the game plan keep the ball moving how the touch judge on the far side miss that I'll never know here's Gary T steam straight at Terry O'Connor runs through him makes a quarter line we've got a scoreboard reading 8 14 it's all happening here's Shelford looks for a runner there's nobody home kick time for the Warrington club British domestic rugby league being played at a frantic pace Warrington of course not completely out of the championship race yet but if they lose today, they definitely will be. It's Gary Jack, he's tidied it up great style. Takes a tackle, and trawling game going on, Steve. Oh, it started well, didn't it? And it's got better. And that was a great take from Gary Jack. Made no mistake, as we know he doesn't. And finished up on his backside with the ball in his possession. But certainly the Warrington team gone up a notch, both defensively and in attack, and Salford doing well to hold them at the moment. Salford having to reorganise, Andy Burgess running well, but taken down no way through. And then dropping the ball just as he was getting up to play it, the referee absolutely right, and Andy Burgess will obviously be disappointed with himself, having done all the hard work, and so the putting the goal quite correctly to Warrington. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, that's a decision that's gone in Warrington's favour. They've got advantage at the scrum, but Stuart Cummins wasn't even looking, he had his back to the play. But as for him to deal with when he looks at the video, not me. Meanwhile, we're getting to play the ball midfield. Here's Sanderson. Takes a tackle immediately from Blakely. Raw comes out from the Fletcher then. Warrington needs some sort of score quick style. There's a big run midfield. That's Derbyshire. Playing the ball. This is Greg Mackey looking to create the opening. Shelford scoots across field. That's almost intercepted. Ball's popped up for Roland Phillips. There's an overlap. There's an overlap. Rob Myler has the pass. Trying to go around on the outside. Superb tackle from Greg Austin on defence. Excellent rugby league being played again. Time running out. Five minutes to the Hooter. Six points in the game. Salford, good value for that. Everything, hopefully, now will start to calm down. We'll see some passes, passes stitched together. Salford winning the game by three tries to one at the moment. Here's Steve winning that one just from the scrum and Gary Jack takes the first one yeah superb first half this has been it started off so well and has got better and Salford is always contributing so much to the first division rugby league matches Warrington defenders shouting please please because they know the dangerous potential and please thankfully recovered from that knock that he had earlier O'Connor bringing it forward again and still taking three or four more metres further with the tacklers round him. Salford regrouping. Ball forward, knees off one, comes back, looks to do it again. Oh, and a swinging arm there by Tease, not for the first time. Derbyshire. Forber ducks under work, Salford working the short side. The kick's going down, it's rolling, it's going to go, is it going to go into touch? No, Lee Penny decides to play it and bring it clear. Penny breaks the midway line in his own quarter. Super tackle affected there. Oh, another late brainless hit. Here's Foster trying to get on with some rugby league. 
ball still not beyond the quarter line. Kevin Ellis is at acting half. He's fed Sanderson. Charging at the quarter line. Breaks it successfully. Three tackles gone. Warrington wrong end of the field. Six points down. Two and a half minutes to the break. Roland Phillips comes central. Mackey's dumped off the ball again. Here's Shelford. Super tackle from former Kangaroo fullback. Player coach Gary Jack. So it's Ellis. Alan Bateman. Puts a kick in, he's brought down when it's gone. Gary Jack tidies it up, great style. Mark Foster piles into the tackle. Gary Jack's picked up a knock and we have a break in play. Salford, a little bit short on defence at the moment with, with Gary Jack on this left-hand side here. But Forber, he's going to try and create an opening. It's the fifth one. Salford still inside their own half. Oh, that one's touched by a... Touched by a Warrington player, the referee didn't see it. He said it was the fifth one. The kick from Blakely, taken over there by Myler. Lee Penny scampering out then. Warrington could do with one of his broken field runs. It's come out in the tackle. Mr Cummins, ten yards away, the wrong side of play. Says the ball didn't go forward. It did, actually. Scott Naylor wearing 14. Scott Naylor's had a bit of a checkered history in his young career. He's had some bad knocks. Thankfully now he's looking fit in the Salford first team. So another penalty for the Warrington club. Penalties on my count, five to three for the Warrington club, as is the scrum count. Ball whizzes past us away to the right. We'll look at the clock. Deep inside the last minute on my SO garage stopwatch. Cheers, Gary Tees. Warrington could do with a converted score to even it up for half time. We'll have to pull out all the stops to get there. Salford have had the bulk of the play in the first half. Roland Phillips, Raw comes up every time Roland touches the ball. Salford forwards have got him well and truly measured today. They're knocking him down straight away. Here's Mackey. Shelford, Bateman, ball's out. Well, that's the story of the first half. Warrington mount an attack, cough the ball up. Salford will go in at half time, six in front. No complaints from me on that score, Steve. Well, I hope you're right. We've uh, certainly got 40 minutes on the clock now. But on the other hand, there's been two or three minutes of injury time because of following that knock between Foster and Blees. And Salford still have it to do in these dying seconds of this first half, certainly having weathered the early storm and come back strongly and scored three tries. Warrington having scored the one. But Salford bunched at the moment. Forber. Well, he's nearly striding. Yes, he is striding away. And Gary Jack's there with him. Gary Jack hangs on to the ball and still runs forward strongly. Not too much support, but good recovery. First of all, the break from Forber and then the, the continuance of the move from Jack. Great from him. Good long pass on to... Oh, it does well to take it. Critchley doesn't know quite which way to go. Decides to go the long way, but there's no way through. Warrington cover makes sure he can't get away. Good rugby league from both teams. It's all for back. Still in possession, though. Long pass out, Forber comes back inside, tries to find a way through, can't quite do it. The Warrington tackling, don't let him get clear. It's the last one. Mark Lee with a kick, that's a good kick. Rolling into touch, 10 metres from the Warrington line. So a good period of six from Salford there, Bill. Absolutely. Warrington had possession in the opposing red zone, spilled the ball. Gary Jack moved it, Salford capitalised upon it, now will go in at the break. A converted score in front. Brian Johnson will have one or two big things to say at half-time. Gary Jack will just say, well done, chaps, more of the same. Warrington will have to dig deep in the second half to get back on equal terms. Took that scrum there. Scrum count has gone six to four in their favour. Gary Sanderson's broken the quarter line. Farber involved in the tackle. Here's the runner, Roland Phillips, looking to make big yardage. Is so doing. Roland Phillips showing you eyes a crowd favourite. Goes down a metre short of halfway. Roland Phillips being mauled in the play the ball. It's Shelford. Warrington really could use some sort of points before half time. Ellis takes a crash tackle there. Super tackle it was as well. Williams on the tackle. This is Tease stepping midfield. Looking for options. Finds Thursfield. Finds Sanderson. Sanderson looking for a yard to generate a pass. Kevin Ellis tries to straighten up, the defence is there too quick. No yards picked up, kick time, injury time first half. Davis looking to make the yard, puts in a grubber kick. Davis showing new soccer skills. 
gets it out for Faster. Match officials giving play on. Matt Faster's cutting in field. Throws an inside ball. There's not a blue and yellow shirt within 10 yards of it. Young snatches the ball up. Salford possession. Everything going Salford's way. Oh, but that should have gone Warrington's way. Superb thinking again by, by that man, Jonathan Davis, showing his, his rugby league brain and skill to go with it. And uh, really, Warrington had a chance to do better there. And the inside pass, well, it might have come off, but, the Salf but there were no more Warrington players there. They were Salford players. And Salford rescued that situation. And Scott Naylor looking to make the most of it and put Salford into the Warrington half. Now, what can Salford do here? Gary Jacks trying to find an opening, but no. Bateman gets him down that time. Three and a half minutes of injury time. Mark Lee's working the short side. He puts the kicks ahead through. The chasers are there, but the ball's going to go into touch. Great touch finding kick again. That brings the applause of the Salford fans. And Salford playing the game where they would like to play it inside the Warrington 20. But Warrington showing in possession. They really do men have men with speed, but that look good on the breakout. Yeah, that's the point. When they can get some concerted possession, stitch some passes together. I've got a few blokes can do the length of the field job. Take another scrum there. Scrum count now seven to four. Main score at half time will be 8 14. That's the one that counts. It's Gary Tees cropping up in the centres. Feeds Paul Derbyshire. Derbyshire takes a big tackle. David Young involved with the late hit. It's Phillips started to pick up big yardage. Phillips drags Farber and Young a few metres. Thirstfield turns up for acting half. It's Shelford. Shelford sprinting across the defence. Can't shake off. Please, please has had an outstanding first half for the Red Devils. Now Sanderson, surge in, eight and a half metres inside the Salford half, deep into injury time, fifth minute of injury time, kick time, Jonathan Davis puts up a high ball, Gary Jack has to turn and chase, the ball will roll out untouched, that should just about see out the first half. Let's bring in Steve Ramsbottom. Put you on the spot if Salford can maintain the same intensity should welcome out on top yeah I hope you're right great first half half time score is is Warrington 8 Salford 14 I've loved it Welcome back then to the second half of the Stones Bitter Championship game at Wilderspool. Half-time score, a bit of a shock. 8-14, I believe Bob Marsden wearing 15, has replaced Ian Bleas, who was wearing 12 for the Salford club. Salford calling the shots here, Steve. Yeah, Blakely making sure he picks that one up cleanly and gives Greg, Zost Greg Austin a rare run this afternoon in field. Austin now playing on the right wing in place of Tex Evans, who received a bad knock in the first half. Salford started lively but Mark Lee taken down before he could get the ball away having tried the dummy Bob Marston with his first run on showing what, why he's a favourite at Salford breaks the first tackle but not the second and Salford making good ground in this first series Terry O'Connor it's the last one the kicker's in place yes Sean Brown's there Makes room, makes ground, puts it deep, going to Warrington. Finding themselves, a full converted score down. Rob Myler comes out on the run. Burgess gets there with a super tackle. Good kick, good chase. Warrington looking to build long. Lee Penny looks at Connor, takes a tackle from Young. 13 metres shy of the half, early doors second half. Paul Derbyshire. Blockbusting run there. Steve Blakely involved in the tackle. Here's Mackey. Shelford. Shelford looking for a gap. Roland Phillips crashes onto the ball. Takes a slightly upstairs tackle. Roland Phillips refusing to go down. Plays the ball for Ellis. Shelford switches play. Burgess is there waiting for him. Here's Rob Myler. No options. Three red jerseys converge on him. Accepts the tackle. Ball will go midfield, needs to be lifted. Davis will provide the kick, puts up a huge skyer. 
Kevin Ellis is after it. Gary Jack fumbles another one. Panic stations. Mr Cummings right on the job. Awards a penalty to the Warrington club. I'll let Steve talk you through that one. Well, it was a, a great Davis kick. And I think uh, it was probably an offside decision, but you take it up. Bill, what are they going to do? No, they're not going for the six points. Davis going to make sure of two more points to bring Warrington right back into it. But that was a very, very difficult ball to take. Davis can kick them so high, and the chase after it was so good. Gary Jack under enormous pressure again, not able to take it cleanly, but they had Salford defenders there with him. And in the end, I think it was the offside decision that was, that was rightly awarded to Warrington. Absolutely correct. A Salford player tried to clear the ball in an offside position. Got to feel sorry for Gary Jack in front of a baying Fletcher end, trying to concentrate on the ball. He spilled it. He, he's not the only first division coach, fullback, that's done that. However, Jonathan Davis, a few boos echoed round when Warrington elected to go for the kick. Safety first, Warrington finding themselves behind, need the points on the board. Three tries to one at this point for the visitors. Doesn't look to me, looking at the bench on the far side, as old Jackson or Tietzel will be able to rejoin the fray. So Warrington down then to 13 available men, don't need any more injuries. So now Jonathan Davis, well, let's have a look at the clock in the 44th minute, looking to close the game down to four points. Davis approaches, strikes, and is successful. So here's the restart. Davis successful there. Score now reading. Warrington 10, Salford 14. Mackey comes out on a scampering run. Gets to the quarter line. O'Connor turns up in the tackle. First field acting half for Gary Tees. Back in the first team after a somewhat prolonged absence. Tees has been outstanding in the alliance. Bit of Marlin in the tackle again from O'Connor. Shelford feeds Gary Sanderson. Takes a tackle immediately. Tremendous tackle coming in there. Here's Ellis. Roland Phillips steaming again. Looking to pick up yardage. Four red shirts converge upon Roland Phillips. Here's Davis. Looks to me as, as though he's lifting a kick. Puts one long into the pocket. Angled at touch. Bounces out. Tremendous kick. Will give us a scrum down. Advantage for the Warrington club. In the uh, last quarter of the game, Steve, fitness is going to come into it. It's been that fast, that frantic. It'll all come down to the work that's been put in, in the gym. That's right, fitness, and maybe if there are gaps appearing anywhere, then the, uh, the Warrington Flyers will be able to take advantage of them, and maybe Greg Austin could do the same for Salford as well, and not to mention Steve. Let's not forget Steve Blakely, a man with uh, a deceptive turn of speed, and Jason Critchley, an intriguing contest still unfolding in front of us. Critchley taken down before he could get into his stride. Get Gary Jack. Certainly the Warrington fans trying to raise their team. And they're doing just that. Salford unable to make any decisive ground. Bob Marsden will have a go. And he gets his pass out to Andy Burgess, who'll have a go. He's going cross field, though, and straightens up. But the Warrington tacklers are keeping Salford inside their own 20. It's the fourth one. Paul Forber tries to get out. He does out of his 20. But that is a, an excellent five tackles from Warrington to Sean Brown with the kick. Relieving kick, going deep and running, but just, just a foot out of play, and Salford under pressure. No finer sight at Wilderspill Stadium than Brian Johnson's swarming pressure defence with the volume turned up by the Fletcher end. Did the job there. Warrington in good field position with Greg Mackey. Just shy of the quarter line, four points in the game. Early stages, second half. Warrington not out of the championship race. Must record the win here and now. Roland Phillips then looking to unload. Bob Marsden involved in the tackle, assisted by Andy Burgess. Warrington have stacked personnel deep right. This is Ellis. 
Switch play for Shelford. Bateman hits the ball hard. Bateman threatening to go the whole way. We have an injury in midfield to Scott Naylor. He's lying inert on the park. Game progressing. Here's Skipper Mackey. Long ball for Davis. He will look to slice through. Exceptional tackle from Peter Williams there. Tremendous all-round rugby league. This is Roland Phillips. Pass is released. Sanderson takes man and ball. Mark Lee on the tackle. Kick time for the Warrington club. Look for a midfield bomb. Jonathan Davis step in. Finally puts a kick in. Looks to be somewhat overhit to me. Mark Foster's not in infield. Touchdown raises his flag. So Scott Nail has recovered from his knock, fortunately, for the Salford club. Salford withstanding a bit of a bad edge there. We'll look to Bill Long. Yeah, good defence from Salford. Undoubtedly, they withstood an enormous amount of Warrington pressure and they are going to find it difficult in this spell of the game to work the ball clear, but David Young is going to do his best. Mark Lee is trying to G his teammates up. Steve Blakely goes as the acting half trying to take somebody out and, and Warrington defence really coming so strongly. Bob Marston does well to hang on to it in the end. Skates on his feet, gets his pass away. Peter Williams looks to find an opening and all of a sudden there's a chance for Salford but the Warrington defence, well, it wraps Peter Williams up. Peter Williams having a superb season, superb game today. This time it's Blakely with the kick. It doesn't quite go where he looked as though he was aiming it but it puts possession to Warrington. Exceptional tackling from Warrington again in that set of Salford six. That's two good sets Warrington have exacted pressure on defence. Here's Lee Penny turning it into attack. Austin with a big tackle there. Lots of marling going on in these tackles now. This is Mackey, long ball. Paul Derbyshire steps through a gap. Paul Farber's at him in the tackle. Derbyshire still maintaining forward momentum. Here's Greg Mackey, he's spotted the yard, he's attacking it. Paul Farber just did enough to knock Mackey over. Tackles in hand, Warrington tails up, surging. Here's Shelford. Shelford looking to slice through, Mark Lee involved in the tackle. Kick time for the Warrington club, 14 metres out, four points down. Second half, Wilderspool Stadium. Davis has put a delicate chip in. Rob Myler does a superb defensive job. That will bring a smile to Brian Johnson's face. And here's Greg Mackey. Mackey taking the first tackle. It's David Young involved. Warrington searching for the gap. Roland Phillips. Warrington have been playing second fiddle so far here in the first half today. Come out in the second half, bossing the show. Here's Mackey. Mackey scooting through alone. Opposite number, Sean Brown exacts a ridiculous high tackle. Match officials seen it. The Salford players are pointing at the Fletcher end. Don't know what all that's about. The tackle was clearly high. You could see it from up here. Apparently, news has just filtered through from our cameraman Stuart Wilson. Somebody blew a whistle in the crowd. I'll bring in Steve. Looks a fair decision to me. It was a great little probing run from Mackie Wanty. He created an opening from nothing. And it was a very, very important last-ditch last tattle, that was, for Salford. And it's Davis will go for two more points. OK. So, yeah, that's right. There was something going on. Somebody heard a whistle. There's, there's no doubt one of the Salford players was pointing to the crowd. And maybe that's why they just, they just stood back for a minute. And we hope that's not the situation. It certainly is the sort of thing that could bring the game into disrepute if that were to happen. There's enough excitement on the field and the referee, Mr Cummings, he can sort things out in his own way. Davis with the kick. Fans not happy that Salford are still moving into position, but Davis, he won't be put off by that. He strikes that one low, but it goes over. Not, that, not the best of strikes from Davis, but they all count, and it's 14-12. Warrington clawing themselves back into this game. They've had something like 11 minutes, 12 minutes in the second half. It's been all Warrington. They've been spent the, almost the entire period in the second half in Salford's half, and so far the, Warrington, the Salford defence has been magnificent. No tries have been scored by Warrington in that period, but those two goals from Davis, well, they're bringing them right back into it at 14-12. Yes, now the game is balanced on a knife edge. 
One mistake, one drop pass, one needless penalty, one missed tackle can cost your team the game. That's what these players are going through on a Sunday afternoon to entertain the likes of me and you. So this is Derbyshire streaming out of defence, tackled eight metres inside the Waddington red zone. This is Mark Forster, has been scoring tries in the last few weeks, has now got 101 for his club. Here's Sanderson, Gary Sanderson, steams into Marsden. Warrington looked to me as though they've injected a couple of yards of extra pace. Whatever Brian Johnson said at half-time is doing the trick. Look at Shelford go. This is Gary Tease. Gary Tease has no options at present. Had to keep the ball tied in. Well, the move's broken down. Ball was released on the ground. A let off for the Salford club. Yeah, great attack that was from Warrington. Shelford making an enormous break. And it was, was it Tease who was, was carrying the ball on? Well, the Salford defence, they didn't let him go, did they? The Salford cover was magnificent in the end and preventing a try-scoring opportunity. And Salford in possession as far forward as he'd been his half. And Blakely nearly gets away. Superb little run from him. <laughs> on to Forber. Forber striding forward, gets his pass out to Gary Jack. Salford regrouping now can they come back and uh, it's the fifth one already the Salford fans really trying to motivate them do they need any Mark Lee's going he gets it out to Austin Austin with a little kick through but it's going to be taken very comfortably by Warrington Rob Myler doing a super job taking the ball in the first place then came out with a good little run took a needless shot in the tackle won't name the player here's Roland Phillips they're queuing up to get at Phillips Three of them pulling at him. Phillips still making yardage. And there's a ridiculous high shot from David Young. The ball has come out in the tackle. It was never played. Mr Cummins hasn't got a clue what's going on. Has blown his whistle anyway. And will give advantage for Salford. Oh, what excitement. In the end, it looked as though Roland Phillips had been held. But when it... When he went down on the ground, the ball came up without being played, and that was uh, uh, the correct decision for a bit of for a bit of untimely. Now Gary Jack's going, a bit of untidy play, but Salford had possession and in the Warrington half, and Critchley, cross field, trying to find a way through. Ooh, <laughs> no, Mr Cummings ignores that. Mark Lee looking to go on his own, a few more metres. Mr Cummings telling Warrington get back on side. Terry O'Connor, not seen many of his foraging runs yet. He's now it's good Salford line. Gary Jack's out there. Critchley has to come back inside, lose his ground. And it's the last one, good defence from Warrington. Salford with Gack and Brown. Back to Bob Marston. Critchley still going, the kick ahead, and the ball goes into touch. So, Salford's still working hard. First threat from them in this second half, but the Warrington defence, they were up to it. But Salford inside the Warrington 20-metre area, but Warrington in possession from the scrum. Yeah, scrum count 8-6, that's the Salford support you can hear in the background. People making the trip over from Manchester. Thanks to every one of them for supporting First Class Rugby League. Here's Kevin Ellis. Releases a great ball for Greg Mackey. Mackey looks to find a yard. There's none available. So the ball goes far side. Gary Sanderson takes a tackle from Blakely. Let's have a look at the clock. Now in the 57th of 80, we're getting to the crux of the game where it'll be decided. Here's Shelford. This is Davis. Excellent tackle, Pete Williams, who's had an outstanding afternoon. Davis keeping it tied in, retaining possession is Gary Tees. Gary Tees sucks in three tacklers. Thirstfield acting half. This is Davis, goes to the boot, kicks long. Will be tidied up on the far side by Jason Critchley. Good long kick from, from Davis. Driving Salford back. But sure hands from, from Critchley. And Gary Jack bringing it forward. Peter Williams defensively been magnificent this afternoon. As he is so often. Bob Marsden bringing the roars from the Salford fans because it looks as though for a minute he might have created an opening. 
Forber trying to do the same and Salford working it clear. Making steady progress. O'Connor trying to do the same. Salford fans not happy with that challenge. Mr Cummings says it's fair, it's the last one. Mark Lee going in his own with a little kick into space. And is the ball going to run? Salford chases, still there, but Warrington collects safely. Lee Penny doing a marvellous job of taking the ball there. Was rolling along the touchline. Warrington again will try and build long. Greg Mackey takes another big shot from Sean Brown. Bit of argy bargy at the play the ball again. Kevin Ellis feeds Roland Phillips. Phillips straightens up, looks to make yardage. Red jerseys again, swarming round Roland Phillips. Vocals coming in from the travelling support. Here's Sanderson. Marsden gets the tackle in. Minutes ticking by, two points in the game. Rugby League Championship fluctuating all round England today. Warrington must record the win. Lee Penny picks up big yardage. Kick time, two metres short of the half. Look for Davis to work his magic. Lifts a high midfield bomb. Gary Jacks underneath it. Takes it big style. Ellis is there. Jack comes out running. Gary Jack threatening to go. Tremendous take, tremendous run. And tremendous support from Salford. It's great to hear the fewer away supporters at this minute out shouting the home supporters. And that's because they can see that in this Salford team, they've got a team to be proud of and one that is giving it its all this afternoon. Game, long way to go yet. We're not halfway through the second half, but Salford, well, they're coming back into it, having withstood enormous Warrington pressure in the opening 10 or 15 minutes of this second half. Salford now in possession themselves and in Warrington territory with Terry O'Connor. Going through there is one of those big charges that we know he's capable of. The fans love that one. David Young will do the same, fearlessly forward, and Salford almost breaking the 20-metre line. Going left, back inside to Farber. Farber straightening up, pushing one off, and it's only 10 metres from that Warrington line. Great, concise running from Salford. Bob Marsden going cross-field, looking for the opening. Can't quite find it, but he stays on his feet. Salford's so close, it's only the fourth one, and the eight metres from the line. Can Salford work something here? Long one out to Sean Brown. Sean Brown onto Gary Jack, onto Austin. But the, not to Scott Naylor, but the ball's dropped, and all of a sudden, it's going to with a chance on that side. And it's Sean Brown doing a superb job and getting Warrington player into touch, but being penalised for doing so. Oh, so what an excitement we have in the game. Salford going so close. Warrington on the break in the end, being pushed into touch, but illegally. Same as to Cummins. Great excitement, Bill. Tremendous excitement. Concerted Salford attack. Mr. Austin spilled it. Derbyshire tore out on a good run. It was an exemplary tackle from Sean Brown. I think it might have been Scott Naylor. My fault. It's got, it's got Naylor over that side. Whatever. Big tackle far side. Mr. Cummings must have shouted, held. We got the needless late hit. Penalty was awarded. I'll recap the game. Scrums are 8-6 for the wire. Penalties 8-4 for the wire. 14-12 for Salford. Time ticking by. But in the 61st of eight, sir. Well, that Salford player quite clearly can't do that. Just hasn't got away with it. So is Mackey. Phillips. Warrington starting to control the game. Spending time in possession. Stitching passes together. Salford doing a big job on defence. Warrington need the win to stay in touch. Shelford juggles it. Releases Davis. Davis in broken field. Nothing on there. Feeds Phillips. Phillips looking for options. There's nobody home. Ellis finally takes a pass. Straightens up and goes. Super tackle comes in from Mark Lee. Everything happening. Here's Mackey. Feeds it inside for Sanderson. Sanderson's going. Exceptional try saving tackle, Sean Brown. Kick time, 10 metres out, three-quarter time, two in the game. This is Shelford with a little chipper. That's a try. Rob Myler follows up a Davis kick, has put Warrington in front for the first time since the first five minutes. The game's tilting Warrington's way. Here's Steve. Yeah, it was a well-worked try from Warrington. It's threatened for some time, but Salford have done all the right things on defence. But it just in the end, there were too many Warrington attackers. It was crisp hands across the field and then the little kick through. I thought that perhaps Greg Austin might have been able to have the legs on the attacking players from Warrington, but he didn't. And it was Myler who clearly put his hand on that ball first and gave Warrington the lead for the first time since the fifth minute of this game. 
<coughs> Here's your restart then, Jonathan Davis unable to convert. Super try for Myler. Concerted Waddington attack there, paid off. There's a huge hit on Greg Mackey from David Young. Mackey gets up somewhat slowly. Here's Mark Forster doing a forwards job, carrying it midfield, picking up big yardage. Waddington will regroup, have a look. There's only two in the game, remember. Roland Phillips doing what he does best, picking up yardage, running straight. First fielder acting half. Here's Sanderson. Taking big shots, O'Connor involved. The press have got O'Connor going to Wigan next season. That would be a big loss for Salford. We'll have to see. Gary Tees will be going nowhere, picking up good yardage there. Kick time for the Warrington Club already. Six tackles gone in a flash. Here's Shelford. Davis puts up a high bomb. That's gone up 200 feet. Gary Jack's got players converging on him. He's fumbled it. Jonathan Davis, ankle tap tackle. Mr Cummins has wiped the slate clean. I'm not sure that Jack had the ball under his control. Paul Derbyshire steams in. O'Connor on the tackle. Full score for the Warrington Club now. Should settle it. They've run the second half. They've bossed the whole show. And they've just thrown it away. Steve Ramsbottom's got a big grin all over his face. Oh, relief out of that one because... It really looked as though whoever put Gary Jack under pressure had been in an offside position from the Davis kick, but when you can kick at the ball as high as that man can, then it really gives you chasers the time to get up there and chase and do just that. But that was a let-off for Salford. And now Salford themselves trying to get back into it. But the let-off for Salford, and uh, it was a pass that went astray, and Sean Brown gleefully made sure it was his. But we so quickly got to this fifth one, fifth tackle. Sean Brown there again with the kick, going long and deep and running and running. Anak finds a superb touch deep inside the Warrington 10-metre line. 25 minutes of the second half gone. Warrington 16, Salford 14. Oops. Thanks, Steve. Well, Warrington were mounting a tremendous attack there. The ball was thrown nowhere. Salford scoops it up, use the tackles and a kick long. Scrum count should go 9-6, to six. penalty count is 8-4, to four. the score is 16-14 to 14. and this is Mark Forster. Gary Jack gets the tackle in, Gary Jack has said that it's his last season for playing, that'll be a sad loss for everybody. Meanwhile Phillips breaks the quarter line. Kevin Ellis, Sanderson has started picking up yardage every time he's carried the ball in this second half. Bob Marsden on the tackle there. All quiet at Wilderspool. Everyone's loving the entertainment. If you've never been to a first-class rugby league match, it's time you did, because it's not a club that'll turn you away. Now then, here's Shelford. Looks at Davis, keeps it tied in. Shelford finally releases an iffy pass. Warrington keeping it alive. Mr Cummings gives six more tackles. So that tells you that a Salford player touched the ball. Davis was roughed up away from play. Here's Mackey, Ellis. Too much traffic, Ellis picking up yardage. Kevin Ellis straightened up, made yardage. Waddington with tackles in hand within the Red Devils half. Shelford's looking for runners, there's nobody there. Super tackle, Gary Jack. So, Sanderson picks up yardage, goes within the Red Devils' red zone. Two in the game, time ticking by. 12 minutes to go. Mackey's put in a little grubber kick. Mark Forster. Well, that try flagged away by the touch judge on the far side. I believe the officials were correct, Dusty. Well, it's difficult to see from this distance, but it would, uh, I think, a bit of wishful thinking from the crowd. He was certainly had the legs on the sulphur defender but I don't think he, he touched down in the field of play. Uh, perhaps I let off for Salford, but that's the sort of thing that happens in the game. Oh, that was forward. Carelessness, little bit of fatigue perhaps. Salford just looking a little bit tired at this point, and who can, who can blame them? They've had to withstand an enormous amount of pressure, and when you get tired, then that's the sort of thing that, that, that happens. 28 minutes gone. So, Greg Mackey right in front of our 
Camera position, feeds and takes, scrum count 10 6. This is Davis looking to arrow through. Super tackle on that occasion, denying Davis. Here's Paul Derbyshire. Scott Naylor involved on the tackle. Warrington looking to try and ease themselves further in front. Roland Phillips gets shut of David Young like he's a bit of paper, no worries. He's then finally tackled on the quarter line. Warrington with personnel left and right. Mackey's switch play for Shelford, who then cuts. Young involved in the tackle with Marsden. Warrington edging into strike range. This is Mackey. Penny. Penny no options. Keeps it tied in. Everybody overrun the ball carrier there. Kick time for the Warrington club. Just two points in this pulsating encounter. Jonathan Davis has took a high shot. Mr Cummins couldn't care less. Let's play go on. There's a ridiculous piece of refereeing. I'm not here to criticise referees. Rewind your video, have a look. That stinks. However, Salford have possession. Yes, yeah, strange situation that. Jonathan Davis clearly feeling aggrieved by, by that challenge. Dropping the ball. Let's hope that's not too serious for him. And Salford bringing it away. And this time... With this position, this possession, good charge from O'Connor. Davis, thankfully, on his feet and looking to be recovered. Perhaps it was a, a finger in the eye, perhaps. And Blakely's through. Now can he go on his own? Can he cut the legs? Great tackle, great little break from Blakely. Now get play, the ball play quickly, keep coming right. Forbes going back inside to Bob Marston. And Salford so close, so, so close, hanging on to it. Look, three metres, five metres from that line. Salford, best attacking position for some time. Good line out there, the runners are there. Oh, difficult pass and the ball's lost and another move. Comes to naught and Salford may well rue just a little bit of over-ambitiousness in that play. But another Warrington player down injured. Great excitement, Bill. End-to-end -end stuff for game full of incident. Yeah, it sure is. You can't fault Salford there. Trying to be adventurous, trying to move it, coughed it up. And the Warrington player has taken what looks like a serious injury. I'll just have a look at the clock. We now have less than nine minutes to go at Wilderspool Stadium. Salford have had three tries, the two for the Warrington club. Davis's boot has been the difference. Score reads 16-14. We've had everything here at Wilderspool today. We've had end-to-end -end rugby, bomb chances, iffy decisions. We've had late hits, big hits. Still time for lots of things to unfold here at Wilderspool Stadium. The Easter period coming up now for the Warrington Club. They will play Widnes at home and Wigan away. Take maximum points from those two games. We'll make the top of the table an interesting place to be. So, Mr Cummins restarts the game. Roland Phillips, it was Mark Foster who took the knock to his head. He now looks more or less OK. He's been left on the pack. Warrington have nobody to bring on. Gary Tees makes hard yards in midfield. Marsden on the tackle. Here's Sanderson, picks up 10 before he meets a Salford defender. Paul Farber dishes out a bit of a hit. Sanderson will play the ball for Thursfield. For Mackey. Mackey spots a yard, breaks the half and loads for Shelford. We have, well, Mr Cummins has once again given the sort of decision that I am not going to talk about. Well, he saw it as a forward pass. The camera position will let you decide for yourself when you look at it again. And uh, a let off for Salford because there was uh, clear Warrington numbers there. Oh, well, Salford have the chance to come right back into it. Salford in possession. Nice little dummy from Sean Brown, but not bought by, by Davis, who I think perhaps wants to get his own back for, for the tackle that Brown made earlier. Davis is there for another one, Andy Burgess. That one suspiciously forward then to Marsden. Salford still making ground on the short side this time. Paul Forber gets his pass on, under the legs. But, uh, but Williams keeping the ball moving, but not making ground yet. Blakely tries to, gets his pass on. Rugby. Oh, holding my breath I am at this minute. I was fearing an interception then, but there wasn't one. The Warrington cover was good. Salford held on to the ball. 
And the goal to Sean Brown. It's a little kick over the top and the chase, but it goes straight to Foster. But Sean Brown hangs on to him, aided by Naylor. Warrington back in possession. Yes, and they need to use it right here and now. Alan Bateman wriggling through two tackles there. Here's Phillips, Roland Phillips, looking at the halfway line, and he gets there. Takes a barrage of shots from three Salford forwards, ignores them all, makes his yards. Here's Shelford, looking for runners. It's Jonathan Davis. Once again, takes a great tackle from Pete Williams. Williams and Davis have had their own little battle this afternoon. Honours have been shared. Here's Sanderson. Big tackle, Bob Marsden. Kick time for the Warrington Club. The clock's playing its uh, important role now. Five and a half minutes to go. Only two points in the game. Gary Jack's got another nightmare to deal with. He's let it bounce. And it rolls out untouched, which will give us a restart. A tap restart on the quarter line. Next score for the Warrington Club could win the game, Steve. Next score, whoever it comes from, if it's not a penalty, could win the game. Difficult kick again from Jonathan Davis, very, very high one. Gary Jack let it bounce, the risky to let it bounce, but it did so safely that time. And David Young forcing his way forward. They've played rugby for 75 minutes and he still has the stamina to do that great. Bob Marsden looking to, to create an opening. Gary Jack up in support if he'd been able to release the ball. Blakely in the line, but taken down before he can release it. It's the last one. Sean Brown going quickly along the line. On to Greg Austin. Greg Austin trying to take the ball and kick it in one motion. Fails to do either, and Warrington will have the opportunity to play this ball. Kevin Ellis in possession. Thanks, Steve. So, here's Sanderson. Head down, driving in. Thanks to today's sponsors, Green Isles, Match Ball sponsors, Beachwood BMW, associate sponsor, Foster Wheeler Energy, and programme sponsor, APB Limited. Roland Phillips is still picking up big yardage this late in the game, taking big hits. I think the players have triumphed in the face of adversity today, both with the uh, slippy underfoot conditions, the rain, and unfortunately, it's got to be said, the match official. I don't come up here to criticise referees, I praise them often enough, but the bloke out there has spoiled the game. Here's Tease, Gary Tease, picks up five metres running, it's kick time for the Warrington Club. Look for Davis to lift another nightmare, it's a little chip this time. Well fielded far side. I'll have a look at the clock again as a super tackle. Less than four minutes. The coaches will be feeling the blood pressure now, Steve. Well, I am an all. Warrington are in the lead and they have the vital two points ahead in the score. So Salford, they know that they've got to throw caution to the wind if they want to win this one now. Only four minutes to go. But they've been under a lot of second half pressure and it really is a test of, of strength, of stamina, of attitude of all those qualities that make Rugby League the great game that we enjoy. A little bit of something going on off the ball at the moment. Now here's a chance. Williams is out there, he kicks ahead. The chase is on. Williams sprinting as well as ever. But that was a great recovery from Myler under us. But Salford still looking to try and come back and score what could be a match-winning try for them. Yeah, still time for either of these two hard-working teams out there on the pack to steal the points, Warrington in the box seat at the moment, but only by a hair's breadth. Now, just two minutes, 20 seconds to go, two points in the game. Everybody out there on the field for both the teams deserves winning pay. That can't happen, here's Rob Myler. Rob Myler, well tackled right below us, playing the ball for Kevin Ellis. This is Shelford, Mackey. Mackey keeps it tied in, would have been a forward pass if he'd released. Sir Roland Phillips repeats the dosage, running backwards, picking up metres, unloads a super pass, and there's a ridiculous brainless hit from Paul Farber. No need for that whatsoever. We've had good flow in rugby league. Paul Farber blows a fuse, dishes out a hit. Davis will convert. That could be the ball game. So 
So the referee having to stop the clock to sort out precisely what happened in that incident. Paul Forber, the man being picked out by the referee. Well, with the referee, what a great game we've seen this afternoon, absolutely no doubt about it. Peter Williams, perhaps for me, has been my uh, man, of the, uh, man of the match for Salford. That's not saying that we've not had a great team performance. We certainly have, without any question or shadow of doubt, a team performance from Salford. Everybody has contributed their part in this game. The tackling effort has been superb. They've scored the tries when the opportunities have arisen. They're ahead in the game by three tries to two, and that's something that they can take into next week's vital relegation battles against Oldham and Lee. But Peter Williams, in, in field play, then for my money, he's been more than a match for Jonathan Davis. He's tattled him out of the game. But Davis is kicking. Well, it's there for all to see. It's, uh, it's something that's in a, in a class of its own in terms of the, the height you can get on the ball and the accuracy, putting Jack under enormous pressure. And here with his goal kicking, not been 100% successful this afternoon, but he's kicked them when they matter. 14-12, 16-14 at the moment. And we're actually absolutely into injury time with that one that the crowd love because there's another one. Warrington players congratulate Davis. 18-14 means that in these dying seconds, Salford have to score a try. Salford, really, Salford have contributed so much to this game, Bill. I'm sure that even you, you know, the most, a most biased of Warrington supporter must, uh, must have regard to that. Well, I don't class myself as a most biased Warrington supporter at all. And as far as Salford go, they've had the moments in the game. They've tried hard. You can't be faulted for that, but with the aid of one or two mystifying decisions, there's been some awful hits and niggling. Salford are battling to get into the top eight. From what I've seen out there on the part today, they should comfortably do that. Their form has been well above the league position, but it still goes in the book as a loss. Salford winning on the uh, try-scoring front, remember? Three tries to two. So that tells you something about their application and their willingness to move the ball. Warrington, though, have stuck to the guns. Stuck to discipline has been outstanding. That's probably one of the features that's helped them if they win the game, to win the game today, keep the pressure on. Outstanding player for the Warrington club today for me has been Greg Mackey. There's the final hooter. So Salford have come here, have worked hard, have tried every trick in the book and a few not in the book to spoil the Warrington attack. To an extent, they did it. So we had tries for Ellis, Critchley, Blees, Evans and Myler. The difference between the teams in point scoring has been Davis's boot. Salford players saluting their loyal travelling supporters. Chorus of boos for the match official. Well, that's about right. He's clearly not up to the job. So from Bill Stewardson at Wilderspill Stadium, thanks for watching. And here's Steve Ramsbottom to sum up the game for you. Yeah, no, I think you said it all there, Bill. An afternoon's entertainment, rugby league that's been a treat to watch. Congratulations to all those players out there for their commitment and efforts and for providing us with such exciting entertainment. Wish Warrington well. We hope that they really do hang on to these victories and win the title. And for Salford, well, please, lads, play like that on Friday and beat Oldham. Play like that again a week on Monday, Easter Monday, and beat Lee. And let's make sure we can go into the last couple of games of the season knowing that there isn't any threat of relegation. So we look forward to the rest of the season. Great afternoon. Final result, though, is Warrington 18, Salford 14.